G'day, Mick here again. In this video, we're gonna talk about airbrushing. But before we get into that, why an airbrush and not just a can? Well, in this case here, it just takes a few drops of uh, paint to, to paint these roll bars and stuff on this Lexan body. So you haven't got paint going all over the place. <laughs> Saves money too. And you can do your details in your, in your Lexan drivers and stuff. Paint the gloves and shadows and whatever's. I probably went a bit overboard with this one. The shadows are a bit dark and stuff, but you get the idea. And details on your hard driver suits. You know, your shadows and belt buckles and things you can do like that. And helmets, it's really good for helmets. Uh, I find I get a much better finish over spray cans, you know, just using the airbrush. Uh, you can be a lot more careful getting close and all that. You can also use it for primer on your hard bodies. I normally do two or three coats of the, uh, the Tamiya Liquid Surface Primer. And again, you know, you don't get it everywhere like you can and uh, it goes a lot further. It's also great for applying automotive 2K clear. Um, you know, for the, the really shiny look. And of course you can do your own custom paint jobs. On this Ultima here, I just use, I use the airbrush for the whole thing. Uh, except for the blue, I think. I think that was out of a can. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used it for uh, doing the shading around the edges here with the black. And the fluoro green and uh, yellow, that was all faded with the airbrush. So we'll get straight into it. And first up, we'll talk about the compressors. You can use a dedicated uh, airbrush compressor like this one. As you can see on this one, we've got two regulators, both with water traps and uh, gauges. And over at the back, we've got two outlets, so you can run two airbrushes off it. Uh, this one, um, it's a Iwata Studio Series. Um, I think I got that for around $650. You don't need to spend that much though. Um, this has got uh, two regulators uh, set up for two airbrushes. You don't need that though. You can probably get a compressor for about 200 bucks. And uh, this uh, airbrush here, I'm using a Awada HPC Plus. Uh, that cost me about 250, 270, I think. You don't need that much either, uh, but we'll get to that later. Uh, as far as compressor goes, all you really need is a, um, a tank. <laughs> Uh, regulator, adjustable regulator, um, so you can adjust your pressure. Uh, you really need an air trap, and um, yeah, that's about it. You don't need a lot. On this one, I've got two regulators, um, fully adjustable. Got the air trap on the bottoms, and that's about all you need. Adjustable at the top. You just that's up now, but it's locked there. You pull it up, and then you can adjust your pressure. We'll go down in this case. So you go down, but uh, if we turn it on, you can see it going up there. And it's not very loud. Um, I normally have this on the floor, on a carpeted floor, so it's really quiet. Anyway, we can crank our pressure up and back down to whatever you need so I really bought this compressor because I planned on having two airbrushes running at once like um, you know one over here for uh, fine details or something um, and really the other one was for a, a different airbrush like this I'll go through them in a minute um it's got a bigger needle it's uh this one's 0.3 this one's 0.5 so this one would be good for doing backing um on an rc body or just one color if you're just painting the whole body um that'd be great whereas this one's much better for details now the reason i say you need a tank um this is only a two liter tank but you really need a tank so if you you know for example if you're doing a very fine line and uh yeah compressor wants to start again or something you know you just don't want to run out of air um you want a uh, consistent amount of air all the time um there is other smaller systems you can get like the uh the tamiya 
spray works compressor it's like an all-in-one setup runs off a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery um, those are pretty good for I think it's two mil lines you can do with them which is not too bad and you can also spray the whole body um, yeah and they're only a bit over two hundred dollars quite cheap um, but yeah it depends how far you want to go really and yes if you do have a big shop compressor you know uh, 200 litre tank um, three heads all that all that good stuff you can still use that only you'll have to you know they'll be up to you to find out what kind of uh, hose adapter you'll need take it to your air compressor supply store or whatever um, but yeah all, all you need is uh, your regulator needs to get you down to about 20 pounds so somewhere between um, for RC bodies probably between 10 pounds and about 30 um, sometimes you might go up to 40 50 but um yeah as long as you as long as you can get your regulator down that low you'll be fine doesn't matter how big your compressor is and uh yeah make sure you've got a water trap <laughs> you can get um you can get water traps to go on the bottom of the airbrush as a secondary line of defense i guess such as these now about the airbrushes themselves um we'll start with this one <clears throat> this is the most common you can get uh you might see when you're searching around for an airbrush you'll see single action or dual action um both of these here are dual action what that means is you push down for air and pull back for paint so a single action one you'll just pull it back you'll get paint air the whole lot <laughs> um so yeah so dual action you push down for air and back for paint and uh, so I've got this one here. This is a top feed, you know, you put your paint in the in the pot there. And um, you've got an adjusting screw on the back. Uh, that's to limit how far back the, uh, the trigger will go. So if you tighten it right up, like if you're doing really fine work, you don't want to slip and, you know, pull it full on. So it'll just make it, you know, only go a little bit. So you can adjust it as far as you want. Yeah, so that's that. And the siphon feed. So this is, uh, like I say, this one's got the, uh, this one's got the uh, smaller needle. It's a 0.3 millimeter. And this one's got a 0.5 millimeter. So it sprays a lot more, bigger. Um, it's not good for detail. It's good for bigger areas. Um, but yeah, this one, the siphon feed, you put your paint in the bottom and it sucks it up as the air comes through it pulls the paint through with it <clears throat> it's also dual action so you push it down for air and back for paint this one doesn't have any form of adjusting on the back it's just uh yeah pull it back as much as you need it <laughs> and of course um with this one a lot more paint flows out of it so you don't have to worry about fine lines being messed up because you're not doing fine lines so yeah this one is the uh the awada hpc plus and this one here is the Awada Neo BCN. So that's them. I don't really remember the price of this one. I think it was only around 150, 170. And yeah, this one was about 270. <laughs> but you can get a brush. All you're looking for is, uh, you know, your dual action. This one, to be honest, I've never even used it, but I had big plans for it. <laughs> um, so this, something like this is really all you need. You need dual action and a top feed and you really want a nozzle or a needle of 0.3 millimeter wouldn't bother going any finer that's for real artist type stuff um and yeah the 0.5 you're not going to get fine lines if you're trying to do them on your rc body so i reckon something about this you'll be right so i'll bring the camera in we'll we'll take the airbrush apart you know basic tear down and uh yeah, you can see what you need to clean and see what the basic parts are forgot to mention in your airbrush kit you'll get a bit of oil and uh, this little tool is very handy for the uh, for the nozzle so we'll get rid of that box so there we go we'll we'll take it apart now so we've got our adjusting screw on the end we'll take that out I'll leave that there and uh, might as well take that off too the handle <laughs> lay it down there and here we've got our chucking screw or chucks uh, chuck nut sorry 
So that, that holds the needle into the chuck. So we can take that off. And we can pull our needle out. <coughs> Needs a good clean. <laughs> anyway. So from there we've got our uh, nozzle cap at the end. We can take that off. Whoop, there we go. And our needle cap. Now on the end there we've got our nozzle. So that's where our little spanner comes into it. So we can undo that. And there he is, very tiny. So that's all our main parts there. Be very careful with the end of the needle if you you don't want to bend it or put any burrs on it because then it's uh, it's not going to be very um, detailed uh, work you'll be doing after that. <laughs> so that's our parts. Uh, you can you can go and take all this out and take the uh, the trigger out, but there's no point for this video. So yeah, I'll give that a clean and I'll bang that back together. Now you can get different types of cleaning kits for them. These ones are quite big, but uh, yeah, these tiny little brushes, they're good for getting into places, you know, up the, uh, up the center and stuff to clean out any leftover paint. Um, so yeah, they're pretty cheap, they're only about, I don't know, 10 or $20, don't remember, but they are cheap. And yeah, you can get all different kinds. I actually don't use them that often, to be honest. Um, normally in the, uh, in the nozzle, you know, you might get a bit of dry paint stuck in there or something. And I just, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> Normally what I do is very carefully put the needle in the end of it and poke it back the other way. And then blow it out or something. Um, I try not to use other needles or pins or whatever in case it, you know, deforms the end of it. Um, yeah, so there you go, and usually I just clean it up with lacquer thinner. And what you can do here, you saw that bit of paint left over there. I had run all kinds of cleaners and thinners through it, but you can get a little bit of uh, scourer or scotch bright, whatever you like to call it, and just, you know, gently run it up, you know, in that direction with the point that way. You really don't want to go back the other way, because apart from stabbing yourself, you might bend the end of the needle. You can give it a bit of a twirl in there. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I can put that back together. And that's it. Our airbrush is all back together. Pretty clean. <laughs> so now we'll have a look at di different types of paint and uh, yeah, squirt a bit of paint around. <laughs> now a quick talk about paints. All these ones here, they're all water based. They're the uh, Createx paints. And you might notice this candy here. This is the green candy I used on my uh, Tamiya Super Dragon on the wheels. Uh, the fluoros over here, they're the ones I used on my Ultima. And anyway, yeah, uh, these ones, quite often use these for practice. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're about, I don't know, uh, 30 bucks for a, a set of five or six or something. Can't remember, but they're quite cheap. Um, now for polycarb paint, I normally mix in a bit of this uh, 40-30 Intercoat Clear. Helps it stick and it seals it better and stuff. And a bit of reducer there of course. Got the 40-12 uh, the reducer. So these ones all need to be thinned. Um, when you're thinning your paint, all of them really, you want it kind of like milk. A little bit, a little bit thicker than water but not too thick. Um, that's something you'll sort of try out along the way, bit of trial and error, you'll work it out yourself. Uh, these guys here, the Proline paints, they're for the uh, polycarb bodies. Um, and as you can see, you can get them in a primary colour set and a secondary colour set. They do have more colours. Um, these ones you use straight out of the uh, straight out of the container without thinning. You can thin it a little bit if you need to, but I found they don't really need it. Um, 
for hard bodies and stuff you can use enamels i use them on drivers drivers helmets and things like that and i use the uh, tamiya x20 thinner for the acrylics i don't have the the thinner right now but i've got the uh i normally use the uh the tamiya x20a acrylic thinner but the lacquer thinner also works quite fine with that actually it might work a little bit better <laughs> i think it comes out a bit smoother and for priming i use the uh, tamiya liquid surface primer and thin that down with the uh, lacquer thinner and for really shiny uh, clear coats on the um, hard bodies i use this dna uh, diamond clear works pretty good for me in an airbrush that's probably about it for the paints um <laughs> we'll get onto some painting i'll i'll do a bit of run on a bit of a painting on some uh paper just with these ones give you a bit of an idea on thinning and airbrush control mainly um, i'm not going to actually paint a body in this uh, video um, but yeah i'll just give you an idea how to work the airbrush and things so we'll get on to that now Alrighty, so i'll uh, go through a bit of the uh, airbrush control and stuff rip the cap off won't be needing that for now <laughs> so yeah like i say for air you pull you push it down and when you want paint pull it back as much as you need so you're better off to hold it kind of like a pen or a pencil you know you got your your finger under here well to the side and you you kind of grip the airbrush like this with your middle finger and your thumb and then you can just uh use the trigger as you need it kind of roll it back under your finger anyway i'll stick some of this uh createx 5051 illustration black in there we'll just put a few drops in there that should be enough hopefully you can see that and you'll see it's it's not very thick it's kind of runny already but i'll stick it stick a bit of a uh, bit of 4012 reducer also createx so i'll probably thin it you know kind of 50 50. that'll probably do for now swish them around a bit in there and you can grab the end of the uh put your finger over the end push the air and pull it back make some bubbles in there helps it mix up a little bit better alrighty so I've got the uh, got the compressor set on 20 pounds not 20 psi got a bit of uh, paper here just stuck on a bit of card so we'll just squirt around see what happens so you got your air and we've got paint <laughs> that's about as straight as I get my lines It's not the best here because I'm kind of leaning forward over the bench from a, a way back so the cameras can see um, yeah so that's on 20 pounds if I pull right back there you go you get a fair old line <laughs> so yeah I recommend just get a bit of paper practice some stuff you know we'll just draw a bit of a uh, I don't know, maybe a beach scene. Give it a bit of a go. Water's not real flat out there. Oh well. Now what I'm getting here is dry tip. That's when the uh, the paint's drying on the end of the nozzle. So I normally just yeah give it a bit of a squirt over to the side like that normally sorts it out otherwise take your caps off and you got to clean it anyway you get the idea you draw a bit of a sun in there or whatever <laughs> it's probably the worst ever anyway yeah just practice you know that's all it's about you see all these elaborate paint jobs and stuff on rc cars most of that is about masking not so much painting with the airbrush um 
you know, you can do a bit of fading around things, whatever. Maybe you'll fade this bit here a little bit. Yeah, probably not the best demonstration, but yeah, all I'm saying is practice. That's it. <laughs> Um, I will be doing a, an airbrush video on a, um, a lunchbox body where I plan on doing a beach scene but it's going to be a hell of a lot better than this <laughs> so yeah if you want to paint your whole RC body crank your pressure up I'll go up around go up around 50 pounds now got it adjusted right back as far as it'll go And there you can go, you, you just go over it. That used up the, the rest of our paint. But as you can see, with this kind of airbrush, with the 0.3 nozzle, uh, 0.3 needle, you still get quite good coverage. Um, so that's why I haven't used my other airbrush at all, because this one does everything for me. So anyway, to clean that, put some uh, reducer, will we'll do just fine or you can use airbrush cleaner swish that around in there or if you want to get real excited you can use a uh, a cotton tip but yeah as I say I um I normally just run acrylic thinner through it later and cleans it all out nicely. There you go, it's all clean again. So you can pretty much ignore my uh, really bad beach painting there. Um, <laughs> but you just got to practice, that's that's what it's all about. Um, get a bit of paper, old cardboard, whatever you, whatever you got. In this case, I use black card. I just practice on some black card here and as you can see first thing you do when you get an airbrush you paint skulls and fire <laughs> um, then I moved on to uh, trying to do a, an atom uh, any physicist might be able to tell me you know how bad that is anyway whatever <laughs> so then I moved on to I found a picture of Reagan from uh, the exorcist on uh, on Google Images there, so I thought I'd just uh, copy that. So that's what that one is. Then the last one, I was having a bit of a go at lightning and hills. Yes, they're supposed to be hills. They're not green boobies. <laughs> it, yeah, it's kind of pretty hard to uh, airbrush at arm's length and with one hand, it's it's not good. <laughs> you really want to, you know, cradle it with the other hand then uh, get in close and have your arms bent. You know, you don't want to be like this or like that. <laughs> Um, if you're doing, you know, small things like, uh, you know, helmets, um, shadows on driver suits and things, you know, you want to be in there close, you know, get right up to it. Doing a full colour, a whole colour on a RC, like a Lexan body, you know, you might be holding it by the roof or something, and in that case you'll use one hand. Um, you'll work it out though as you go, whatever's comfortable for you. And yeah, keep an eye out, pretty soon I'll, uh, I don't know when exactly, but uh, I'll get a Tamiya lunchbox, but I've got I've got one up there, and uh, yeah, I plan to do like a beach scene all on it, like a mural type thing, and uh, probably end up coating it with uh, 2K clear, so it's nice and shiny. So that's about it for this video, hope you, you know, hope you found it useful, if you're starting out airbrushing or whatever. Um, yeah, like the video if you like it, then uh, subscribe if you're new here, that'd be awesome. And yeah, happy airbrushing.